Today in the news. President Yeltsin warned that the situation in the Russian Federation may be exacerbated due to the referendum in Tatarstan. Leaders of the Commonwealth states stated their positions on the eve of the meeting of the CIS heads of state in Kiev. Prednestrov is relatively quiet, although the Kazakhs continue their support to the Prednestrovians. UN Secretary Representative Cyrus Svans arrived in Armenia. President of Afghanistan Najibullah is ready to cede power to a transitional government. Good evening. In, in discussing the situation in Tatarstan, President Yeltsin said that the Supreme Soviet of Kazakhstan could reconsider its decision and, re and forego the referendum as currently formulated to avoid exacerbating the situation between Russia and Tatarstan. Yeltsin outlined five theses for the Tatarstan government. First, the formulation of the questions confirms secession from Russia. Secondly, the results of the referendum will exacerbate ethnic relations relations in Russian and Tatarstan. Third, a unilateral decision by referendum contravenes international law. Fourth, the dialogue between the authorities of Moscow and Kazan is threatened. Fifth, the voting pro procedure and the formulation of questions detracts from the results of the referendum. Today, Ruslan Hezbollah leads for the Omsk region after presenting a draft of the new Russian constitution to the parliament. The new constitution, apart from its other achievements, could alleviate the threat of, the Russian, of Russia's collapse by defining relations between members of the federation, by increasing parliamentary and other organs of power. After lunch, deputies took up the problems of the Russian territory integrity. After a special session of the Supreme Soviet, the special hearings were held on the referendum in Tatarstan and a corresponding resolution of the Constitutional Court of the Russian Federation. Speakers included head of the Council of Nationalities, Abdullah Tipa, who just retu returned from Tatarstan, and state councillor to the Russian President Shakhrai, who presented President Yeltsin's appeal to the people of Tatarstan. The chairs of the Supreme Soviet of Tatarstan, Muhammadov, detailed the situation in the Republic on the eve of the referendum. This became the subject of a stormy, prolonged discussion on gaining an agreement between the position of the Constitutional Court and adopting it for execution. The primary goal of the document would be to preserve the integrity of the Russian court. The results of the referendum may be considered legal if the Tatar legislation will comply with their resolutions of the Constitutional Court. Today, there was a plan among separatist forces in the Tatar Republic to remove President Admir, reported head of the Republic, Russian Republican Party, Lysenko, who would base his information on the Tatar Republic opposition. Today, at the session of the Belarusian Parliament, there was a closed meeting. There were an entire range of military questions discussed. The Supreme Soviet of the Republic adopted a resolution to create its own military. We're currently working out different proposals. There is a commission created by the Belarusian Supreme Soviet on dividing up the military forces on the Belarusian territory into CIS strategic forces. And the second part would be our our Belarusian army. There are proposals by the general staff on the question. We also have two of our own proposals. Now we're trying to normalize the process to coordinate the situation uh, between individual military units, unification, and other questions. Today, delegates leave for Kiev for the meeting of the CIS heads of states. Are you bringing any draft legal proposals? Yes, we've developed. 12 draft agreements between the heads of states in the CIS. Today I pass these to the chairman of the Supreme Soviet, Shushkevich, and these will be proposed as our options based on the events in Russia, Kazakhstan, and other points. 
The chairman of the Belarusian Commission on Defense, Vyacheslav Grib, said that the first stage of creating a Belarusian army would involve upwards of 90 to 100,000 people. Speaking on tomorrow's CIS meeting, President of the Supreme Soviet Turkmenistan said today that it is still not time to resolve the military questions. Turkmenia intends to conclude a defense alliance with Ukraine, with Ukraine and the Russia. Upwards of 30 questions will be discussed by the heads of the CIS. This is primarily military questions concerning the Commonwealth. The forecasts include full approval of projects to, to zero results. This shows a range on the results of the meetings at the heads of the Commonwealth. Meetings will go practically unnoticed by Kiev residents. However, they are distracted by ration coupons and gas prices of 10 rubles per meter. meter. In the Ukraine, you can't do anything with this artificially created situation, this mess, this commonwealth. This is a completely fictitious organization. Only few people need the, this. Kravchuk and Yeltsin to limp along quietly without any problems. So I guess that's right. I don't see any other way out. Taking advantage of the situation, the leaders of the Crimean Tatars tried to call attention to themselves before the meeting. We demand the restoration of the illegally dissolved statehood on the former territory of the Crimea and the full return of all Crimean Tatars to Crimea immediately. President Nazarbayev and other participants in the meeting have already ag theoretically agreed with a draft which will be discussed today at the meeting. Though, there, though not yet raised, the question of creating a coordinated council on taxes and the money and credit system will also be considered. It is supposed that Participants in the meeting will create a commission on introducing CIS troops to Nagorno Karabakh, which will be similar to the UN units. Despite all the expectations and the hopes, Kiev observers agree on one thing our life will hardly change very much after the meeting between the heads of the Commonwealth. What else will be on the agenda with a meeting of the Commonwealths tomorrow? It will be quite broad. This attests to the buildup of problems and the lack of details concerning common interests. The question of the legal succession of the Soviet state to the former US of the former USSRs. The military plays a key role. The military is the heir of the huge Soviet army. Politicians and commanders are now concerned with the material worth and the new battle may begin over the Soviet army. In entering the political game with a desire to review priorities of nationality policy formed over many years, the situation may lead to a point where leaders of the Commonwealth at the Kiev meeting start raising claims against each other concerning the, the creation of the new Russian Ministry of Defense. However, this people believe this is very realistic as it is impossible to maintain a unified army as Premier folk and beliefs. Russia has now finally formally shed its facade and openly recognized that it can't help to, you can't have a state without an army. But if the members of the meeting renounce their facade in Kiev, if military issues are not resolved in Kiev, where the large U Ukraine social political movement, Ruch, has already made known that the meeting should be the last in Ukraine, how, how will the unity of the strategic forces or regulation of conflicts in the CIS be resolved in the near future. The situation in Pridnestorvia is relatively calm. Both sides note only insignificant infractions of ceasefire by the other sides. Today, a commission on obser observation of ceasefire in Pridnestorvia is formed. Three Kuban Cossacks were headed for Pridnestorvia, were, rele were relieved of four grenades and three machine guns by the Ukrainian authorities. The Cossack movement is causing a great deal of dissatisfaction among the Russian leadership. On the one hand, Moscow can't support separate on the left bank and given to the seduction of autonomy. On the other hand, they should defend Russians outside Russian territory. The Cossacks are not bolst are not beholden to the subtleties of inter-ethnic relations. While Moscow is silent, there, is, there are certain problems. The Cossacks will certainly send their, continue to send their horses. Please, I'd like to take a few minutes of your time. Where are you coming from and where are you located now?
We're located in Koshnitsi, where we've taken up positions at the factory. Our company, our 1st Battalion, is concerned with the defense and digging trenches. We've already repulsed three attacks by our opponent. This morning? No, this was yesterday. After the announcement by the government concerning the ceasefire, after the agreements have been reached, have there been any dead or wounded? No, after that, there weren't any. Now we're in the village of Kosnitsa, where, as I've already said, there have been several battles. Guardsmen, Cossacks here, the road shows signs of the battles. But today, today is fairly quiet and calm. Yes, today is fairly quiet and calm. However, there are very many fierce battles here. There's still no word on former commander of the CIS-14 Army, Lieutenant General Yakovlev. On December, in December, he became the head of the Prednestrov Defense. On March 16th, he, on the way from Tiraspol to Odessa, he was kidnapped. The Russian parliament has instructed the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to investigate the fate of the amazing Luchen general. The best fighters in the inter-ethnic conflicts seem to be Afghan vets. The chairman on the Commission on Affairs of the Internationalist Soldiers, Ruslan Arushev, is now appealing to the, his former comrades-in-arms to renounce